Hi, this is Joe, and I'd like to begin by discussing section one of the essential writings of Christian mysticism. And we have an anthology on biblical interpretation. That is, how do the Christian mystics go about the business of interpreting the Bible? What makes their version of biblical interpretation unique? And I guess that leads to a more fundamental question before I delve too deeply into this book. That is, fundamentally, what is a mystic? What is mysticism in the context of Christianity? Uh, let me give you a little background of myself. I was raised um, various branches of Protestantism throughout my life. I have never been Catholic. And most of these mystic writers is in the Catholic tradition. So growing up my entire life, we didn't use the term mystic uh, at all that I can think of, <laughs> at least not in the crowds that I hung around with. So the very notion of mysticism in the context of Christianity, um, it's, it's a bit of a mystery to me. I'm trying to understand it. Uh, I want to understand it not as a believer, but as an interested outsider. I'm, I am not a Catholic. So what is mysticism fundamentally? And after thinking about it today, I, I think the best answer that I can come up with at this point is that Christian mysticism is a way of allegorizing your religion so that it is a continual pursuit, but not an attainment of God. Or it's a, 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 a contemplation, a, a continual grasping at, but never a complete understanding of God. It's a continual contemplation of paradoxes, mysteries, um, but never anything concrete. I never see the mystics um, contemplating, for instance, the life or the parables of Jesus or the Sermon on the Mount. Rather, they seem to contemplate those things that cannot be put into tangible uh, form, like the Trinity or the dual nature of Jesus or, or the afterlife or, or some non-physical, non-tangible aspect of, of the Christian life. And it's all done with the purpose of, of closeness to the love of God, however painful that may be. And next week when we get into purgation, you may understand why I say that. But I think that's as close as I'm going to get to what mysticism is. And if anybody is actually listening to this and wants to um, add anything to that or correct me, please feel free to do so. I'm, I'm interested to learn. Uh, another question that I have, as I, as I read this section, was that most of the mystical writing dealt with allegorizing portions of scripture so that scripture became about the pursuit of God. Uh, for instance, one of the favorite uh, passages of the Bible of the Christian mystic is the Song of Solomon, because the imagery of the bride and groom, of the, the husband and the wife, of the lovers, is ready-made for allegorizing into a, a mystical uh, pursuit to the love of God and the love of, of God to his bride, the church, or, or, or the believer. Now, in, in the church that I used to go to, the, la the last big church that I used to go to was Calvary Chapel back in the early 90s, we never used the term mysticism in Calvary Chapel. But what is the difference between what the 
Catholic mystics, as presented in this book, do, and what characters like um, Hal Lindsey and Chuck Missler used to do in Calvary Chapel circles when they would practice Gamatreya, or, or they would look at fulfilled prophecies in the Old Testament that point to uh, the person of Jesus, or when they, maybe more to the point, they would look at something like the Jewish tabernacle before there was a temple, and they would allegorize and mysticize, for lack of a better term, every element of the tabernacle, be it the um, the brass rods and the silver hinges and the or the silver rings and the the um, the, the the badger skins that would cover the holy of holies and the curtains and the implements. Every aspect of that tabernacle somehow, in some way, pointed to some aspect of Jesus. Somehow, they got the the uh, showbread to point to Jesus, and they got the laver to point to Jesus, and they got the silver sockets and the brass pins all to point to Jesus somehow. Is that Christian mysticism as well? I mean, what's the difference between the pursuit of God as presented in the Song of Solomon or in the life of Moses and the pursuit of God by allegorizing elements of, of the tabernacle or or what is called messianic prophecy, as we love to do at Calvary Chapel. I don't see much of a difference. If there is a difference, it's a subtle one. Um, but just something for me to think about. So that's how most of these uh, mystics interpreted the Bible, as a way of allegorizing or it was interpreted as uh, to by allegorizing passages of scripture so that it became about the pursuit of god the life of moses became an allegory for the pursuit of god or the three writings of solomon ecclesiastes proverbs and song of solomon became about three stages of pursuit of god it all becomes about a pursuit of god um, that is the mystic in way of interpreting the Bible so far. Next time we're going to move into purgation and asceticism. But as I promised, before I get into that, I will switch gears drastically and read the first portion of The Portable Atheist. So I think next time we'll talk about that. Take care.